Siraj, you need to be doctor. But I like to code. Then make doctor from code. Hmm. Hello world, it's Siraj, and this is a real-time demo of a healthcare project codenamed AlphaCare that Keshav Vodaria and I have been working on for the past few weeks, and I'm open sourcing it today. It's built entirely with Python and uses deep learning to detect abnormalities in a patient's heartbeat signal. We'll also use a tool called Rapid API to easily look up and display more symptom information. AlphaCare can be used as a visual aid tool for cardiologists during heart surgery so that they can focus their efforts on the correct regions of a heart and avoid damaging the patient unnecessarily, which could ultimately save their life. In this first video of the AlphaCare series, I'm gonna explain how we built this tool and how you too can build your own heart disease classifier using Python. According to the WHO, heart disease is the number one cause of death globally, and over 75% of these deaths occur in low and middle income countries. And that's because it's detected and treated way too late. Most people in the world can't afford a doctor, but those who can usually only visit once a year. This process will seem archaic within a decade. The future of healthcare is not fixing diseases once they happen, it's preventing them from ever occurring in the first place using data and algorithms. Instead of visiting a doctor once a year, we'll be wearing biometric devices that generate millions of data points by monitoring hundreds of bodily signals called biomarkers in real time, from heart rate variability to nutrition analytes to temperature. This could be in the form of a smartwatch, sleep ring, heart monitor, smart chastity belt, and eventually nanobots in our bloodstream. Deep neural networks will be making health predictions using this data 24 seven. The goal of AlphaCare is to use deep learning to diagnose and prevent all disease eventually, including the root cause of all of them, aging. In order to do this, we'll be progressively adding new capabilities to the system every week. So let's get started building this heart disease classifier. First, we need to do some background research to understand our problem. We can do a quick search on archive.org for deep learning applied to heart disease papers. This biomedical literature can be hard to interpret for beginners, like me, since it traditionally requires a decade of your life in school and $200,000 worth of tuition, which we'll avoid entirely with AI. But let's pick one of these papers and use a tool called ScholarC to create a simple explanation out of it for us. It can be installed as a simple Chrome extension. ScholarC uses a statistical language model, likely a transformer network on their backend, trained on huge text datasets to be able to summarize domain-specific jargon into short, concise language. As we learn, we can look up definitions easily one by one and slowly develop a mental model for the problem at hand and a history of previous technologies that have been used to solve it. Arrhythmia is a condition where the heart beats either too fast or too slow. It's an irregularity, and this changes the heart's anatomy, reduces blood flow, and generally damages its electrical system, which a whole host of issues can arise from, like scarring. Let's now find some data sets. Universities and governments and .org websites are usually our best bet. Google data set search will help here. We're looking for heartbeat data collected using a device called an ECG, or electrocardiogram, a very common tool used by doctors. Yo, let's make a bet. I can fix hearts with neural nets. Alpha care trained on ECG. Arrhythmia solved so easily. Uh, heartbeat moves one, two, 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 three. Shout out to my YouTube family. Uh. Once we find a data set, we need to ask which of these features can be used as input to our algorithm. We've got a whole host of patient demographic data. Luckily for us, this data set has been labeled by a cardiologist into six categories. Each is a different type of heart arrhythmia. Now, normally with machine learning techniques like random forests and support vector machines, we have to select the right features, but with deep learning, the network learns which features are ideal for predictions given enough data, usually. Just to be safe though, let's remove some of the noise from this data. 
If we research ECGs, we'll find that two common forms of noise are power line interference and electromicrographic noise. The literature shows that the way we can remove them to ensure our prediction is accurate is by using a technique called the wavelet transform. It uses a collection of functions called wavelets, or small waves, each at a different scale. This tells us which frequencies are present in our signal and at what time they occurred. It does this by working with different scales, at both the large scale, analyzing these large features, then at the smaller scale, analyzing smaller features. It starts at the beginning of the signal and slowly moves the wavelet toward the end of the signal in a process known as convolution. Once we run this transform on our data, the noise will be removed and we can more accurately predict irregularities. What we have is a one-dimensional signal, and we could use a one-dimensional convolutional neural network, or CNN, state-of-the-art for image classification, on it to make predictions. But more dimensions, in this case, would mean more accuracy. Now, a three-dimensional CNN would require a lot more training data, which we don't have. So let's just use a 2D CNN. We can transform our 1D data into a 2D representation. Then we can easily build a CNN with the Keras library. Each set of matrix operations like pooling and convolution and activations have been proven to compress data into a representation that can then make predictions. We can train our algorithm using Google Colab for free with their cloud GPUs. Once the training process is complete, we can evaluate how the network learned over time slowly approximating the correct predictions to classify a given part of the signal at a time step as an arrhythmia or not. By testing it on a part of our data set, we can view its classification and accuracy scores. I mean, it looks pretty good, but this is just a Python script, so let's make this into something more usable. Let's now build a web interface for our model. We can download the Flask framework for Python web apps, then spin up a bare bones web app with just a few simple commands in terminal. Now in Flask, we'll allow the user to upload an image using this image processing library and some JavaScript. Once uploaded, we'll insert our model to make predictions at a given URL, then print the results to HTML. Now, we can add more symptom metadata by using Rapid API, the world's largest API hub, to easily embed patient metadata into our app. We'll select the Symptom Checker API, and we can even test it out from the dashboard by giving it patient demographic information. It'll give us a Python snippet, which we can then embed into our app, and this will give cardiologists even more useful information. Once we test it out, we can see results on a web page. This week's coding challenge is to develop your own project that uses AlphaCare for medical imaging classification. Post a classified medical image on any social media platform with the hashtag AlphaCare and submit it using the link in the video description. I'll announce the winner in two weeks. And there are three things to remember from this video. One, we can use deep learning with Python on ECG data to predict heartbeat irregularities to aid cardiologists during mission critical surgery. Aging is the root cause of all disease, and with enough data, we can slow down and someday reverse the biological clock. And anyone can do data science. No degrees necessary with the freely available data, compute, and algorithms on the web. Please subscribe for more programming videos, and for now, I've got to secure immortality, so thanks for watching.